This is going to be a deep dive into the Advanced Art Students Workbook published by Firehouse Publications. Instead of breaking this up into smaller sections, I'm going to give you an overview of the entire book so you can see if this might be a good resource for you. I also consider it my tab workbook for teaching artistic behavior, which a lot of teachers use through across the country. This is a more open-ended version of my art students workbook which allows for a lot of student choice and is a place to document their work. So as we go through the book, we can see that we have our contents, a little word about censorship. These are the classroom rules that I have that are pretty general. Then you can have students put in your cell phone rule and how you'd like that applied to your students. I start the book with media requirements. These are kind of general media that are available in most art classrooms. And then um, non-traditional media or teacher's choice can be added there. So in a full year course, I ask that my students hit a certain number of these media so that they're exploring lots of things and not focusing in on one particular thing. So up here, you're allowed to put in how many of these media need to be done. And as the student does it, they can check it off, put a date, a brief description, and then the teacher can initial it. As an overview, I have organized this book by major historical period from the Byzantine movement all the way through op art. Plus, I've included um, some overall uh, areas of Asia, Africa, Europe, Latin America, uh, Middle Eastern, Native American, Aboriginal, Ancient Egypt, and other, plus some contemporary artists. So students choose a theme to explore and create their own work of art that is going to harken back to one of these periods or to one of these cultures. I also require that through the course of a year, a student does one self-portrait at least, one still life where they're doing um, a collection of objects, and then one project from direct observation. This can sort of be a still life, but I'm thinking of something that's done without a photograph. So again, the student um, puts in the date when they completed that assignment, and then the teacher can sign off on that. So I start off with a sketchbook idea, um, so students can kind of personalize that. If you feel that you want your students to work in a sketchbook, this can be helpful to kind of start off the year. Then I have some video support, and I have links in here that are quick links for you to use uh, with your students that cover the periods from Byzantine through op art. And these are short paragraph descriptions of how you can identify a work that fits within that particular period. So for example, Byzantine is from the 1850s to the 1200s, almost always religious, often with gold backgrounds, perspective and human proportions were often wrong, and the art was not meant to be realistic, but religiously symbolic, and that would include icons. So we kind of cover this um, very quickly for the students so they have a brief overview. And then I have some uh, brief ideas, thumbnails of potential projects for each of the um, schools of art and historical periods. So for Fauvism, same as Impressionism, but with purposefully altered colors. So students could do uh, an outdoor scene in the style of Impressionism, but then use the wrong colors to kind of achieve a, uh, an idea of what Fauvism might look like, and so forth, all the way through uh, op art. Uh, I have a statement about cultures, and then about contemporary artists. So this book becomes a place for students to document their work and their research, so that if perhaps you are observed by an administrator, they can see that every student will be working on something different, but you can go back to here and see what the student is working on specifically and the documentation for their work. So School of Art, Culture, Contemporary Artists reviewing in detail. So they would pick their inspirational topic, the dates for that area, define it, four famous examples, whether it is a culture or an historical movement, what do all of these works have in common, what specific themes, ideas, impacts, or techniques came from this work, and what could I create that could be inspired by these? And usually their first idea is what they want to do, but then I have them put two backup ideas in case the first idea is just too much for them to handle. Then there's a page for them to sketch, and then they would go on to the next topic uh, after they finish that project. Then as they're actually working on the projects, this is the page that I have them have open on their table at all times. So this is the progress indicator, 
Again, you'll be required to attach this paper, have it available for your project, and again, they transfer over their inspiration for the project, the concept that they're going to be doing, and how it's connected to their inspiration idea. They can give it a title if they're ready to, the introduction date, the sketch should be completed by, a transfer designed by, and then begin their final project. And these are the outlines as they would kind of outline it and what they feel like they can hit as um, deadlines. Then as the students are working, I'll take a look at Johnny's project and if I feel like he's about 25% done, I would initial right where it says 25% done and we can have a conversation about what's going on in their project. If we come back two days later and they're still on 25%, I know that they're not progressing on their particular project. But perhaps they've jumped ahead and then maybe they're at 60% the next time that I see them, so I would initial there. The project rubrics are here and these are my universal art project rubric. And the idea is that the 90% column is what I hope that they are achieving and that if they feel like they're exceeding expectations, they have to write in how they exceeded those expectations. So how did you use additional elements or principles than what I was requiring so they could write that in, uh, how they covered craftsmanship and neatness, time and management, execution, originality and uniqueness, and then requirements and depth. And usually this is where I ask them to make personal connections to the work that they're creating. I can leave some comments in here. The way that I do this is I have students underline the statements that they feel are true or to write in how they exceeded. And then I grade it with them and I circle the thing that I agree or disagree. And then we assess a grade for that particular project. The pages that come later in the book are for support. So if a student is working on a particular project and they need some help with some ideas or vocabulary, that can be in there. So we have a review of the elements and then our principles. And I do have some video resources available for that. We have a little quiz here if you need to do an assessment on the elements and principles. We can go into the emotional values of color and shape. Again, I have a video available for this. Uh, color vocabulary, value shading, gyroscuro, spectrum, etc. We have a color wheel mixing chart. They can use color pencils on this, or you could copy this over to heavy paper uh, where they could do it in any other kind of media. Coloring expectations, kind of how we want the students to do on this. And you'll also see this kind of repeated in the back uh, in color. We have our color wheel available, spectrum, and our basic information in color. Uh, color bias information, how um, yellow and red make orange. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, and how colors can kind of lean one way or another. Taking care of your brush, plaster work. So as students are exploring certain things, then there's going to have some resources in here uh, on how they could you know, mix plaster correctly, how to use razor blades correctly. And again, I will have videos on my YouTube channel that will help with all of these um, things. So inspiration for ideas are in here as well. These are also in my regular art students workbook, but sometimes a student will be stuck for ideas and then this is a way for them to come up with, you know, nine icons that they can then organize into maybe a pop art project, explorations of who I am, what I know about myself, what others think about me, that can then be translated into a painting, drawing, or sculpture, life-changing events, a Dada Day sculpture project, um, gridding, so they can actually lay plastic uh, on top of this and then trace it so they can create a transferable grid. Um, we have some core connections to art and math, so if you have a substitute and you want to assign kind of some written work for the day, uh, that can be done with this. We have some perspective practice pages in here, some uh, pages where they can use a ruler and prove that perspective is a real thing by laying the ruler on the receding lines and finding the vanishing point. Sometimes I do a one point or two point perspective uh, drawing of the school and I have students tie it into surrealism so they can kind of have some fun with that. Two point perspective, three point perspective, some exercises and drawing boxes, proving perspective again. Uh, then we have uh, cross-hatching so they understand kind of what is expected of that and then they can practice the cross-hatching on another page. Stippling, maybe scribbling, coloring spheres, uh, exercise in primary, secondary, analogous, complementary colors and monochromatic colors. Uh, again, more forms for just kind of practicing our skills. 
facial proportions are in here, so if they have a hard time with that, then we can use this as a reference. Body proportions in here, doing the eight heads tall. Sometimes I do that for a fashion unit for my Art One students. But if my advanced students are trying to do human form and they're kind of struggling with it, I can give them this page to use as a reference. Every Monday, my students respond to art quotes, so we do this as our bell ringer. It takes about five minutes. So we read a famous quote about art, uh, try and understand what is uh, being said about this, what are we learning about this, and then they would go ahead and write down their uh, interpretation of what they feel is being said in there. So there's quite a few of them, enough to kind of get you through a year. And then in the back for my 504 and IEP students, I actually have the definitions spelled out uh, for the worksheets that appear earlier in the book. So this is helpful if you do have a student who needs some additional help or they're not quite understanding uh, what is what is required, this can be helpful. The uh, answers to the quizzes that are forward in the book, principles of design, the art elements, uh, and then we have some research topics that they can do. I call this interview with a dead artist where they find a famous artist who has passed away and they do an interview format kind of uh, research paper, which then eliminates the problem of plagiarism because students can then uh, write in first person I give them the scenario, um, kind of the requirements about one inch margins, 12 point font, et cetera, and then 50 potential questions they could ask for an interview. Most students need only about 10, but there's a lot more there than they actually need. And of course, a rubric to kind of finish it up. I have another one where they could do instead um, a story where they take four famous works of art and use those as illustrations for a story that they would write about. Uh, we have some pre-planning pages where they could develop characters, settings, plot, and resolution. And then they would uh, cut out examples of the famous works of art, label them. They would do research about the artist and the artwork. So then that goes along with their uh, story. And of course, a rubric. Reviewing our styles of art from Byzantine through op art. So we have some pages where they can do that, and I have some video support for that. Here is our uh, Western art history flowchart, so they can find a famous example of art. So if we said um, something like Demoiselles de Avignon uh, by Picasso and they were trying to figure out what school of art that would belong to, they would look at the image and then answer the question. So is there a subject? Can you see stuff you can recognize? In that particular painting, the answer is yes. Are people wearing togas? No. Uh, does it show very rich or royal people? No. We would continue down. Is it very old looking and fairly realistic? That would be a no. We go on, do you see things from popular culture? That would be a no. Do they have a poster-like appearance? That would also be a no. So then they would continue on to the next page. Is there anything dreamlike or impossible magical happening? No. But then here we do get a yes. Is there a strong sense of emotion or does it have a very unusual use of shape, color, and form that almost hides the subject? That would be yes. Do you see a strong use of geometric shapes? That would be yes, and that leads them to cubism. And then a little note over here talks about how cubism is a kind of expressionism, um, but the, because it's so important, we set it apart in general. So this is a great way for students to explore the um, uh, Western art uh, through this and then we have some support pages where they can learn to identify the different schools of art. We have some pages where they can um, do a thumbnail of a famous work of art, make a guess as to which school it belongs to, what evidence, and then justifying their answers. So that's available to them. Then we have some video note pages. So if there's uh, a short YouTube video that we want to show to students, um, they can actively participate by writing five facts and then reflect on the video, something that they found that was interesting, unique, or thought-provoking. And then I have a long format video uh, page as well. So sometimes if I'm gonna be out for a day, I might assign uh, a video for the sub to play, and then the students would write 20 facts about what they see. Up here it says that two word facts and silliness, incomplete thoughts will not be acceptable. And then summarize the video down here and you can circle full credit for 100% if they did do the task or a percentage that they uh, did and participated. So this has been really helpful on my sub days and usually I will use a video that's tied to whatever the current project is that I've assigned students or a particular concept that we're covering that week. 
here we can look at masterpieces, um, describe them, uh, and then using the principles uh, of composition and the art elements to kind of describe where they see that. And then how does the artist uh, achieve success in his work by using the elements and principles? So we have some worksheets like that available for students to analyze their work. At the end of the workbook, I have 180 sketchbook ideas. So if you are gonna assign a sketchbook, like a weekly sketch or a daily sketch, there are gonna to be tons of ideas here that students can kind of pull from. Later on, we have uh, critiquing pages where they would describe, analyze, interpret, and evaluate famous works of art or work of each other's peers. Then we have full lesson suggestions. So in the beginning where we had thumbnails, these go into a little bit more description. And again, these are by major uh, movements in art from Byzantine through pop art. So students can, what I have them do is actually go through and put stars next to the ones that they feel are kind of interesting and they might want to explore through the year. And then I have some coupons that if you feel you would like to use with your students, uh, then those can be used for final exams and such. So that's been a look through the art students workbook if you, the Advanced Art Students Workbook. If you feel like this is something that would be helpful, you'll find more information at firehousepublications.com and there'll be links to the book um, there where you can order directly from the publisher who can do a PO order through your school system, become a vendor, or if you just wanna get a copy through Amazon, uh, if you click on any cover of a book at the publisher's website, it will take you to the book on Amazon as well. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe to my videos and you can find some more resources on my channel. Thank you.